So in the previous example, we had calculated the number of oxygen molecules per one cubic centimeter of volume in the atmosphere. And that brings us to this interesting topic of concentration units for atmospheric gases. So in general chemistry, you probably use molarity or molality, particularly when dealing with solution chemistry. But in the atmosphere, those units aren't quite as useful. And so we use a few other concentration units more commonly. The first of those is the one that we just mentioned, number of molecules per cubic centimeter of atmosphere. Additionally, there's another very, very common unit known as the parts per scale. So specifically parts per million, parts per billion, or parts per trillion. And you may have run across those units before when we were talking about uh, maybe trace amounts of something in solution. So occasionally those are used in solution chemistry as well. But the difference here is that in the atmosphere, occasionally we will add the a V at the end. So it might be PPM V. And that's used to specify that these parts are based on volume or remember via the ideal gas law, number of molecules or number of moles uh, versus being mass based. So in general chemistry, whenever we dealt with parts per million or parts per billion, it was generally a mass scale we were talking about, uh, and or at least related to that. Uh, and in the atmosphere, though, this is a volume scale. So you'll see that occasionally. And then the last one is molarity is occasionally used, but only very rarely. It's really not a very useful um, concentration unit. So very quickly, let's just look at how we interconvert between some of these units. So if I take PPX, and X is just standing in for the, any of the parts per scale, and I want to convert between some parts per X scale to molecules per cubic centimeter. Let's just take, as an example, 50 ppm, the parts per million of a specific gas at 25 degrees Celsius and a total layer pressure of one atmosphere. So maybe this is at sea level and we've got 50 parts per million of uh, some gas or uh, some example like that. What parts per million really means is that we have 50 molecules per 1 million molecules of air. And again, this is distinct from the, the mass-based parts per million that you may have encountered back in general chemistry. But here, parts per million is simply 50 molecules per 1 million molecules of air. So if I want to convert this from, uh, from molecules per, mole per, per a million to molecules per cubic centimeter, what I have to do is change the denominator. The, the numerator units are fine, but the denominator needs to change from molecules to volume. So how in the world do I relate number of molecules to volume? Well, it's the ideal gas law. I need to relate number of molecules to number of moles, and then number of moles is related to volume via the ideal gas law. So first I take Avogadro's number and convert from molecules to moles. So uh, 1 million molecules is really 1.66 times 10 to the minus 18 moles. And then I use the ideal gas law, rearrange for volume, substitute in the number of moles, the gas constants, which you'll want to become pretty familiar with. And the temperature here, we said 25 degrees Celsius, that's 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere. And I come out with 4.06 times 10 to the minus 17th liters. This is a very, very small amount of volume. And then now that I've got that in liters, I need to convert from liters to cubic centimeters. So uh, that's converting liters to milliliters and then remembering that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And we come out with a volume that corresponds to the bottom as 4.06 times 10 to the minus 14th cubic centimeters. So my initial 50 molecules of gas per million molecules of air becomes 50 molecules of the gas per 4.06 times 10 to the minus 14th cubic centimeters. So divide that through and we come out with 
a unit now in molecules per cubic centimeters of 1.23 times 10 to the 15th molecules per cubic centimeter. That's how we would convert between the PPM scale or PPX scale, whatever it is, to molecules per cubic centimeter. Let's do a couple other conversions very quickly. So let's take an example of going between molecules per cubic centimeter now and molarity, since occasionally molarity is used. So here, as an example, 1.23 times 10 to the 15th molecules per cubic centimeter. And so what I can see first is I've got, uh, so I've got molecules per cubic centimeter, and I need to go to moles per liter. So I need to convert both the numerator from molecules to moles, which is what I've done here. Take in the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number to get me to the number of moles per cubic centimeter. And then now we've got moles, but it needs to be moles per liter. And so I convert my denominator now from cubic centimeters to liters, and we come out with 2.05 times 10 to the minus 6 molar, or moles per liter. You can now see why, uh, why molarity values for atmospheric gases aren't generally used, because they tend to be very small and sometimes can be uh, extremely small, to the minus ninth or, or less. And so that's just one reason why we don't tend to use molarity very commonly for, uh, as an atmospheric concentration unit. One more example. So let's go back from molecules per cubic centimeters. So let's go back to the PPM scale. Let's basically do the reverse of what we did at the beginning. And so if we take 1.05 times 10 to the ninth molecules per cubic centimeter, at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere total air pressure. Essentially, what we still have is we've got number of molecules per cubic centimeter. We still need to convert the denominator to number of molecules. And it's, I wanted to do this example because although going from the PPX scale to molecules per cubic centimeter may be fairly straightforward, in reverse, there's, there's one slight um, sort of catch near the end that we have to, that we, that we should discuss. So what I need to do in both cases though is I need to convert the denominator to the right units. So here I need to convert a denominator to number of molecules. So it can be parts per or molecules of this per molecule of that or parts per this per parts of that. And so we'll do first is what we've done before, convert cubic centimeters to liters. And then we use the ideal gas law to convert from uh, essentially to substitute in. So what I've done here now is taken the uh, cubic centimeters and gone to liters. Now I'm using the ideal gas law to find the number of moles that would be occupied by that volume or that, that would be in that volume. So using the ideal gas law, I can rearrange solve for N, plug in the pressure, the volume, gas constant, and the temperature. I come up with the number of moles of air in that volume, in that initial cubic centimeter. And then we go here to, uh, we take the number of moles, multiply it by Avogadro's number, and we come out with the number of molecules occupied in that initial cubic centimeter of volume here in the denominator. So if I take that now, I can take the initial 1.05 times 10 to the ninth molecules divided by what I've determined to now be the total number of molecules that are occupied in that volume at that pressure and temperature. And then what I come out with is uh, a number where molecules per molecule, I come out with a number of 4.19 times 10 to the minus 11. Now, what this is, is this is molecules of gas per molecules uh, per one molecule total. Or but basically this is 4.19 times 10 to the minus 11 parts of that specific gas per one part of, to of the total uh, atmosphere in that, in that space. And I come out with a number to the minus 11. Now, I don't, I don't want to have, um, when I'm reporting this on the PPM scale or the, the PPX scale, whether it's parts per million, parts per billion, or parts per trillion, or 
parts per quintillion, if that's such a thing. What I want is I would prefer that to be uh, a number that doesn't contain an exponent, particularly a large negative exponent. So what I have right now is I've got 4.19 times 10 to the minus 11 parts per one. But if I take all of this and say, well, okay, if that's parts per one, if I look at the exponent here, 10 to the minus 11, I'm gonna want to look at this on maybe, if I wanna look at not parts per one, but parts per million or billion or trillion, when I'm trying to get rid of that exponent. So if I had a trillion total parts, so rather than just one total part, but if I had a trillion total parts, then that would just be scaling all of this by a trillion, and that would get rid of the exponent here, and I would end up with 41.9 parts per trillion, or parts per trillion V, PPTV, for specifying that it's a volume uh, ratio. Hopefully that clarifies this. So when you are converting between molecules per cubic centimeter to PP something, or parts per something, then you want to go through this process, and then once you get to the end, look at the exponent. Presumably it will be some negative exponent. And then scale this by a number that gets rid of that exponent. So if it was 10 to the minus 6, for example, you would, do, you would put this on the parts per million scale by multiplying by 1 million or 10 to the 6th. If it was 10 to the minus... Uh, eight or nine, you would probably multiply, uh, you would probably put it on the parts per billion scale by multiplying by 10 to the ninth. In this case, we were at 10 to the minus 11, so it made more sense to multiply by um, one trillion to get parts per trillion. And this is how we talk about concentration units and convert between them for atmospheric uh, conditions.